What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business, Lady Simone Candle Co. Today is candle making week. I kind of had the store not on shutdown, but I wasn't taking any orders pretty much um, due to having the baby and then recouping for a little bit. So I need to completely restock my store so I can get back in the groove of everything. Um, I actually just got through eating breakfast, <laughs> had a bagel, chugged down some water here. So now I am just getting organized so I can batch produce my candles this week. Um, so a little bit about how I organize my candle production weeks or days, you know, however I choose to break it up. Um, so I go ahead and break up my candle making into um, days, um, depending on how much I need to make. Um, I do that because I do not have a lot of curing space. So I have where I stock them and store them until orders are fulfilled. But in terms of letting them sit out and cure and trim wicks and label and all that stuff, I do not have a lot of space to do that. So depending on how much I have to make, I have to break it out into um, sporadic days um, and, and kind of create like an assembly line process. So this week I have nine cents to make and of those nine cents, I am going to make um, six of each. I try to keep at least six to eight in stock um, at all times. Um, so I just told myself I'll do six of each and um, then, you know, look at my inventory, see what I'm working with um, and then reorder supplies and, you know, make as I need to. So I actually have nine cents to make, six of each, and actually one of those cents, I'm making seven. Um, so here is how I break it out. I am breaking it out into three different days this week. So today is the 8th, and then the um, 10th and the 12th. And I am going to start with um, three cents today my beautiful candle my classy candle and my fearless candle um i already broken it out into how much wax total wax i need um to melt down in my presto pot and then how much fragrance oil i need for um to make six candles and then the seven seven candles um so that's how i organize i like to have all of my math done what scents i'm working with i already have the scents pulled and ready to go um, so now I just need to get everything organized and set up in my kitchen so I'm going to start with these three today and on the off day the in-between day which would be tomorrow um, you know that's when I'll go back in see if I need to clean up any tops trim wicks label lit them up and put them in the uh, where I store them and then on the 10th I'll do the same thing. So, you know, it's kind of like rotating in, rotating out, rotating in, rotating out, just so I won't over clutter our living space um, because my husband still works from home too. Um, he's in and out. Um, so I don't want to overcrowd the space. So that's when I have a lot to do, y'all, that's how I do it until we get our home home. The Lord blesses us with the home home and I can actually have a candle studio. This is how your girl has to get it done. Um, so everything is ready to go, written out. Um, so let's just go ahead and get this started. All right, we are going to get started. Um, I am going to start breaking down the wax. I need 3,420 grams um, to make 19 candles. So I am going to just measure it out in one thousandths. Um, and break it down that way and get it into the presto pot that's over here so I'll go ahead and get my stirring utensil aka carving knife that i use and if you're wondering i know i get a lot of questions i get a lot of um, new subscribers so sometimes you know they're asking um questions because they may not have seen all either previous videos but I do use the coconut soy wax um, and with this wax I use the CD14 wicks um, for my nine ounce 
jars. So that is what I use. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get this going. Other than that, you all know how the candle making process go. So I am about to get this open and carved. grams of wax in my presto pot so i'm about to turn this baby on let that start melting and then work on jars so now my wax is melting so i'm getting all of my jars out and ready to go and i use baking sheets to put my jars on um because it's just easier to transport that way and then I also like to warm up my jars um, before I pour the wax in to kind of help minimize uh, wet spots so that's another reason why the tray comes the trays come in handy as well Here is the wax. I'm actually gonna turn this down just a bit so it can kind of slow down with the melting. This thing gets hot fast. Um, here are my jars laid out. So I'm about to take off the stickers at the bottom. Um, clean, of course, wipe them down with alcohol and paper towels. And so um, next what I do after that is I label each tray with the corresponding scent. So um, this will be my first scent, second scent, and a third scent. And then I also have three pouring pitchers that will correlate with each scent as well. So when it's time to pour my wax, all the jars are wicked and everything, I already measure out in my pouring pitchers the amount of wax I need for each tray to fill up the amount of jars on each tray, right? So that way I can mix all my fragrance oils and everything is organized and literally all I have to do from that point is pour and clean all of my supplies. So when it comes to my batch production process, I'm very intentional and step by step. I do not like to feel like I'm bouncing from different steps. I like to have everything kind of like an assembly line because it just works better like that for my type of brain y'all so I want to encourage you all when you're batch producing like this whether it's on a kind of a scale like this or even larger um, have a system so that way you're not all over the place you're not making too many mistakes and your all your candles come out top quality transitioning in and out I mixed pulled the tray out mixed when it was time to pour I poured and then cleaned out the pitcher well wiped it down and then did the second scent I mixed the fragrance oil with the wax and then pulled out the tray and it was time to pour I poured and there so now I'm on the last one so this is what I mean by having a system um, having some type of assembly line, unless you have a bomb candle studio and you kind of already have your studio mapped out and organized versus me, I'm still in my working out of my kitchen and I have limited space. So I have to have a method to the madness in terms of um, uh, getting things done. Otherwise it's just gonna be chaotic.
Okay, so the last jar is in the oven. I'm going to slowly stir this last scent. And so that is pretty much how I batch produce my candles, guys. And then um, I update my inventory in Shopify and go from there. So I'm also going to show you that process too. Um, because now I'm using Inventora and it's synced to Shopify. So uh, actually, I think when I enter in my production into Inventora, uh, um, in terms of entering in Inventora how many products I made and then of what scent I made, um, it should automatically update in Shopify. So we'll I'm going to go through that and show you that process as well which is super, which is even more convenient. I know when you um, put in a production in Inventora or put in how many candles you made, um, it automatically deducts your raw supplies and materials, which is good. So you don't have to necessarily keep track of that every time. However, I do recommend still um, at least once a month going through and actually hand counting and measuring and all that stuff your inventory to ensure what you have in your inventory system matches what you have on hand so that way there's no order discrepancies or anything like that so better to be safe here we go guys so those are the first of the three times I am going to make candles. So um, this is day one, and then the, I'm going to do the exact same uh, process on the 10th and the 12th. Um, and then in between that, I am going to be printing out labels and you know clipping wigs, fixing tops if needed, and things like that on the off days. Um, so that way I can begin to restock the shelf, not take up so much space in our home <laughs> and get things out the way and cleaned up. So stay tuned. It is day two of my candle making week. And so this is the off day. So this is the next day where I'm not making candles. I'm cleaning up the batch that I did yesterday. So right now I'm going through examining each jar, seeing what needs a heat gun. Um, so I've already trim, trimmed the wicks and then I just go through with some alcohol and a paper towel and I do a good wipe down on the outside of the jar, the bottom of the jar um, to give it a nice clean sleek shine on the outside and then I kind of examine the whack the jars and see what needs fixing so out of this whole batch I've only got one candle that has a sinkhole right here um, so I'm going to fix that with a heat gun and then there's a few where um, the way it cures sometimes it gets like little residue right there right on the top brim of the wax so i like to go through with the heat gun melt it down um, let it cure and then i clean up with alcohol and paper towel too really nicely to make it super clean and sleek so so that it looks presentable when customers receive their order so that's what i pretty much do on the off day i trim wicks and clean up the candles and pull out this bad boy here <laughs> trusty heat gun and get to work.
All right, y'all, after a long week of candle making, I have kind of showed you my process, um, explained how I do production um, for Lady Simone Candle Co. in terms of restocking shelves and how I kind of do an assembly line process and how I just I just take it one day at a time. You know, I make a bunch of candles one day. The next day I'm cleaning up and, you know, making sure the tops are looking good and all that stuff. Set those aside. Next day, make a bunch and do the same thing. So I did three big days of candle making. You remember the in-between days is when I did my cleanup and all that stuff. And I finished all the cleanup um, on Sunday evening, um, which, right, today is the 14th, which is a Monday. So I finished everything yesterday um, as of recording this video. So um, all the orders that came in when I restocked on Friday will be going out in a few days. So all the candles I made have been curing at least a week or, you know, the candles I made on Saturday, about the time I shipped those out, they would have had a few days to cure as well. So now I'm at the process where I am about to label everything and print out my stationery. So the stationery that I include in my... Um, orders I include empowering cards um, to go with my empowering collection so anytime somebody orders anything from my empowering collection they get a corresponding card that goes with the name of that candle and it's just a blurb of some empowering words um, in relation to that particular candle name and scent how that scent has helped me empowered me what it reminds me of and how I pray it empowers you and so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about where I get my stationery and how I handle that process. So um, for those who don't know, I use online labels for all of my labels um, and my card stock. Well, one of my cards that I use. Um, so from online labels, I use the four by three. Um, card stock for my empowering cards which are and they come already perforated I know you can't really see that on camera I'm sorry for the dim lighting um, it's like late afternoon um, so they already come perforated all I have to do is stick them in the printer pull up the design in online labels um, pull up the design and just print and tear it <laughs> and include it in their their orders so, and I get, I get all my other labels, my wax melt sample labels, my candle labels, my wax melt labels. Um, all of my labels come from online labels and my four by three card stock. The other card stock that I use for my thank you cards and candle care cards, um, I actually, I want to say I got this off of, I think Amazon. I can't remember. I believe this is Amazon though. I haven't had to buy cardstock in a while, as you can see, it's so many. Um, it's like 250 pages. Yeah. So um, this is the four and a half, four point two five times five point five inches. Um, I hope that makes so four and one fourth inch and by five one half inch. <laughs> That sounds crazy, but that is this card stock here. And these are for my thank you cards and my candle care cards um, that go in each order as well. Same thing, they already come perforated. Stick them in your printer and bada boom, I'll pull up the, um, the design and online labels. Boom, I print from home. And then the only other thing that I include in my orders too is um, I stick, I stick them in an envelope. So I stick the thank you card and the, um, the empowering card in the envelope. I seal it with a logo sticker. So I, again, I get my stickers and labels from online labels. I pull up the, my logo design on online labels and I print those from home as well. Stick the cute little sticker here. Um, I also use the stickers for my tissue paper when I'm rolling up the candles and packing everything up that way um and so yeah that's exactly what i use 
and to include in my orders, including a wax melt sample as well. And so I do all of this from home. It's very convenient. I just buy all the paper and stuff that I need. Everything is designed in Canva, upload my designs into online labels, and then I print from home. So that is how I do that. So now I'm going to get that done. And only things left to do is label some candles and then I'll be ready to pack orders and ship them out in the next few days. So I just wanted to show you really quick before I end this video, what it looks like when I print it at home. So here, here's an example of the labels. These are the candle labels. I use the three by three. And here's another example. So I do this with all of my labels, my, lab my logo sticker labels, again, my wax melt labels, um, and my wax melt sample labels. Uh, so I do that all from online labels and now including my thank you cards and my empowering cards and my candle care cards. Um, just buy the blank sheets, y'all. Buy the blank labels from online labels, the blank card stock. Amazon has card stocks in all sizes as well that's already perforated. I got some really cool, just blank, simple white envelopes. Um, and I mean, it's so easy to like elevate your packaging and your branding to well, elevate your packaging to incorporate different elements of your branding to make your overall customer experience heightened and taken to a whole nother level and it does not have to cost a lot of money all these blank sheets and products last me quite a bit and honestly it just depends obviously on how many orders i'm getting <laughs> will determine how often you run out but when you buy in bulk you know 250 sheets or you know online labels you can get you know a thousand stickers and labels for 20 to 25 dollars you know what i'm saying and it it will stretch you and last you for quite a while so this is my way of saving money um um not necessarily cutting corners i don't i don't really like to say that because i put a lot of effort and pride into my creativity and my designs and um my branding but it's it's just a really good way to save money and um have an alternative to you know putting your coins your coins can can go towards other needs of the business and all this stuff takes five minutes to print from home and then you can go ahead and stick some labels on your candles so just wanted to throw that out there just in case you were wondering how i do all of my labels and stationery from home so I really hope you enjoyed this video. I thought this would be great to kind of document my candle production process when I have to make tons and tons of candles to restock my store um, and get things done. I already updated my inventory in Inventora and I'm loving how it just automatically deducts the materials that you used to make your big candle production. So I don't even have to worry about that right now, uh, like counting anything right now until next month. Um, and then it automatically syncs with Shopify as well. So when I updated my stock in Inventora, it updated it in Shopify as well. So that saved me a lot of time. So again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are looking for any of my resources, any helpful tools, resources, and and tips and things like that, you should be following me at Lady C's Digital Studio anyway. But if you're not, everything is linked in the description box below. All my coupon codes are down there as well if you wanna take advantage of all the resources and systems that I use. And until next time, bye.